Hello to everyone. I'm Dr. David Clark. I am a lecturer in ministerial theology at the University of Roehampton in the ministerial theology program. And tonight I will be presenting um, a short webinar on the topic of how to present your ministry vision. Whether you're trying to raise funds, whether you're trying to recruit a group of staff or a group of volunteers, the effective communication of your vision will be indispensable to the success of your ministry. And so I'm very thankful that you could be with us tonight. And now I will uh, transition over to screen sharing and we will look at our presentation for this evening. For 20 years, I had the privilege of leading an organization called Youth with a Mission Minneapolis. And in this aerial shot, we're looking at the beautiful campus that we had uh, near the city of Minneapolis in the state of Minnesota in the United States. And this was a wonderful, wonderful place to live and to work. We had uh, a 240 acre property with housing for our staff members and dormitories for our students and recreational facilities and um, classrooms and offices for the staff. And over the course of my leadership, we had the opportunity to launch beautiful, beautiful ministries. We trained over 600 young women and men from 30 different nations. We sent them out as missionaries and short-term missionaries to diverse places throughout the world. We launched different ministries in our local area, a home for pregnant teens. Uh, we planted a church among the Filipino community. We had different outreach teams working to feed the hungry. It was a beautiful experience. And what I learned throughout the course of my ministry involvement with YWAM, or Youth with a Mission, was that the effective communication of vision is indispensable, it's necessary. Your ministry will not thrive without vision. And even the scripture says, without vision, the people perish. And so it's for that reason tonight that I wanna give you this practical training on how to really effectively and clearly share your vision with others. There were always seasons when our progress seemed to slow down when we were involved in this ministry. And the problem wasn't necessarily a lack of donors or a lack of resources. What we often learned was that if our progress was slowing, it was because for some reason or another, we were no longer effectively communicating our vision. It's my conviction that funding follows vision, that people follow vision. And so one of the most important tasks of a leader is having the skill of clearly communicating this vision in, an, in a compelling and inviting manner. What we're gonna go over tonight is five basic questions. And this is, this is a guideline for you as you are presenting your ministry vision. These, these are the questions that you want to make sure you're answering when you're talking to people about your ministry, when you're talking to people about the work that God has given you to do. The first question that you must address is what is the need? What, what is your ministry doing? Who is it serving? How is it addressing a problem in the world? What is the problem? Where is the need? And so we begin with presenting what's going on in the world and why your work and your ministry the second topic that you have to address, the second question that you have to address is what is your vision for change? So after you've discussed the need, after you've explained what the need is, then the next step is to say, well, what is, what is the change that you long to see take place in this area of need? And then the third question that you have to address is how is this going to be accomplished? And this is where you're going to be discussing specific strategies with regard to how your ministry is going to work, how it's going to function. And this is the most practical element of your presentation. The fourth question that you have to answer is why you? 
And this is where we bring in our personal story. This is where we talk about our own testimony, our own life experience, the good things that have happened, the bad things that have happened. And this is where we really establish a heart connection between the ministry that God has given us and the work that we're carrying out, between the vision that God's given us and the actual work that we're carrying out. And then finally, the fifth question that you have to address is what are you asking people to do? And so in some cases, this might be a presentation where you're looking for people who are going to be donors to your ministry. In some cases, it's gonna be uh, looking for volunteers, uh, people that are gonna actually join your staff. Uh, when I was working in Youth with a Mission, we were always trying to build up the number of our staff members. And so it was a constant process of recruiting and recruiting and and recruiting, trying to get more missionaries to join our team. And so in an effective presentation of your ministry vision, these five questions must be addressed. If you fail to address one of these questions, your presentation will be incomplete. So you have to talk about what is the need? What is your vision for change? How is this going to be done? Why you? And what is it that you're asking people to do? And now what we're gonna do is unpack these points one by one. The first step in talking about the need is to define the focus of your outreach. And don't commit the, plas the classic blunder. And the classic blunder is to start talking about your activities, to start talking about what you're doing. There will come a time to give specifics about what you are doing and what are the specific activities of your ministry, but don't begin with that point. Begin with the need. You have to understand that, that people who are donors, people that are in church are exposed to ministries all of the time. And there enters an element of fatigue of just hearing about, well, this person's working here and this person's working there and this person's doing that. And a lot of times people are hearing about all these ministry activities and they don't even understand, well, why is this ministry necessary? What is the need that it's addressing? And so you have to start out talking about the problem. What is the problem that you want to address? And so I've given a couple examples. And what I do when I'm talking about the need is I think about three possibilities. You can talk about people, you can talk about a place, or you can talk about a passion. So those are the three Ps that describe a ministry need. Is this ministry addressing a need among people? Is this ministry addressing that need that exists in a certain place? Or is this ministry addressing a passion to address a problem in the world? So for example, if a ministry were to focus on people, for example, you might talk about the Tibetan community of Minneapolis. That's my hometown. Uh, we have several uh, refugees who have come to the cities, several people who have arrived uh, from Tibet. We have communities in the cities. And so maybe God has called you to this people group, to this ethnic minority that's living in the city. And your vision is to address the needs that exist among this people group. Or conversely, you might want to look at a place, a, a geographical area that God has called you to work in. And so in this particular instance, I'm giving the example of, of the Tenderloin District of, of San Francisco. Um, this is a fascinating community, 15,000 homeless people living in a very small geographic area, all kinds of issues, all kinds of needs surrounding it. And I have a very good friend who works with YWAM in this city and he's called to that place it's not necessarily limited to a specific people group. It's just limited to that geographical area. God has called me to the Tenderloin community of San Francisco. Or finally, you might want to identify the need as a passion or a problem that exists uh, on a global level or a local level. So for example, I have a friend who's called to work with human trafficking. 
And she is a, trying to address the problem of human trafficking in different regions of the world, in South America and Asia and different areas. So it's not necessarily de de defined by a geographical area. It's not necessarily defined by one specific people group or ethnic group. It's really a global problem that kind of transcends geographical areas, that transcends people groups, but it's her passion to address this issue. And so once again, when you present the need, think about those three Ps. Think about people, think about a place, or think about a passion, a problem that you're going to address. And the first step of your presentation is to discuss the need. Now, the second step in the presentation of your ministry vision is to talk about change. What is it that you long to see happen? What's going to be different because of your involvement in this ministry? What, what is going to be transformed? Who is going to be transformed as a consequence of your work? So what you want to do in this area is, first and foremost, tell the story of, of your of your community. Tell the story of the people that you're trying to meet. So for example, if we were going to be talking about human trafficking, we might want to talk about statistics where uh, we mentioned the fact that every year over 1 million children are, 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 are sold into the sex trafficking industry or, or kidnapped and placed in that industry. You want to tell individual stories. You want to demonstrate that you are the expert of this topic. You know this topic better than anyone else. And so when I hear my friend talk about human trafficking, she knows the statistics, she knows the stories, she knows the reason, she knows everything about it. And she really creates that engagement. When my other friend who works in San Francisco talks about the tenderloin, he, he knows all the issues related, all the problems that the community faces, all the history of his community. He tells the story of the place that he's trying to reach. And so that could involve the history, the background, it could involve demographics or statistics of that community. And once again, you wanna make it personal. So you're gonna select one person or one family who is representative of that target people. And so once again, you, you wanna create kind of a, a personal engagement between the need that you're presenting and your audience. So they feel that heart connection. And once you've told the story and discussed the problems, in light of the needs that you've described, you then lay out the specific changes that you envision for that place, for that people group, for that global problem. And my recommendation is that you would summarize this vision in a single sentence. And so, for example, you might say, my vision is to educate children in the Philippines with regard to the dangers of sex trafficking. Just a simple summary sentence of the vision. And so here's some more examples. If, you're, if your vision is for the Tibetan community in, in Minneapolis, you might say, my vision is to provide vocational training for Tibetan youth in order to support economic development. Or this is the example I just gave. If it's sex trafficking, you might say, my vision is to train Filipino children and parents on how to recognize sex traffickers in order to save children from exploitation. Or if your vision is on the, uh, for the place of the Tenderloin, my vision is to plant a church in Tenderloin that will minister to street people and help them rebuild their lives. And so what we've done up until this point, we've presented a need, we've talked about a place, people, or a passion. We've gone into details about this need. We've told the story of people who are part of these communities. And now in the second step, we are clearly presenting our vision for change. Now, after we've gone through those first steps, now comes the time to talk strategy. Now comes the time to really get into specifics about the activities of our ministry. And so when you get to this point, it's very good to be specific. What are your plans for bringing change? Talk about goals that you have at each stage. 
demonstrate the feasibility of each step. So here I'll give you an example of what, of what this might look like. If I'm gonna address the issue of, of, of sex trafficking, my first step might be to write a curriculum on sex trafficking awareness with a particular emphasis on Filipino culture. And so when I'm making my presentation, perhaps I'll put a time frame on this, that, that during the first three months of my ministry activity, I'm gonna be working on writing this curriculum. I'm writing this, this guidebook. Then once I have finished that book, and I have my team together that's gonna to be working in this ministry, I'm gonna train my team members in the use of this booklet. I'm gonna teach them how to give these presentations on sex trafficking. And then once I have the materials and once I have the trainers who are now equipped, the next step will be to contact elementary schools, primary schools in different cities around Manila, for example, requesting permission to present our program in their school assemblies and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So your first stage might be, we're doing this in the Philippines. Then your second stage might be to reproduce this model in Thailand. Then your third step might be to reproduce this model in Ecuador. And you can go on and on and on. But it's in this third stage that you're really showing your listeners that you have a plan, that you're not just somebody who recognizes a problem and is heartbroken over what's happening. Here you're showing them that you know what you're doing. You know how to move forward and making this ministry a reality. Now, the fourth step is where the opportunity comes to get personal and to really tell your listeners why you are passionate about this ministry. Why you, okay? And so some examples that you might want to include in this, in this part of the story. You might want to talk about any specific words that God has given to you. Has God given you some specific scripture? Has God given you a revelation or some kind of an insight into this community? Did you receive a prophecy? Um, you know, different people among us have had times in our lives where people with a prophetic gift have come to us and spoken a word, you know, a thus saith the Lord kind of a moment where uh, God confirmed his calling and God confirmed his purposes for us to get involved in a specific ministry. Tell that story. Talk about the things that God has spoken to you. How did you get interested in this? Did, did, was there some kind of a heart connection? Um, you know, sometimes it can be something very personal that, uh, that you had a friend who perhaps was a victim of, of, of exploitation and uh, and, and having witnessed that firsthand, now you've become passionate about addressing this issue. Or, or maybe uh, you know somebody who has been homeless, or, or maybe you've had a member of your family who struggled with addiction, uh, alcoholism, or drug addiction. And what, what is your reason for wanting to get involved with this ministry? And then the final element here in the why you category is, what gifts or abilities or experience do you have that will be to your advantage? Why are you better at this than anybody else? And you know, there are moments that we have to realize that it's very likely that there's other people that have had the same idea and are thinking about doing the same thing that we're doing and we're not in competition with anybody. But we really have to show that we know our stuff. And we really have to show that, that, that if you believe in this cause and you wanna make a difference, I'm the person to get behind. So, for example, when I uh, when I mentioned that I was in youth with the mission for many years, I was uh, uh, a leader of a, of a YWAM community in the state of Minneapolis. Um, I would oftentimes tell my story. I would I would include different elements of my testimony uh, about how God had had uh, worked in my life in different ways, and so. Down here on the bottom left of the screen, this is me as a 19-year-old uh, missionary in Southeast Mexico, uh, living in a cardboard house and, and working among the poor. And I oftentimes will tell the stories of, of my ministry involvement in Mexico, six years living in that setting and the things that God spoke to me in different ways. And then I might go on and, and tell the story about how I met my lovely wife, Kimberly, and we're both 
quite a bit younger in this particular picture, but I might talk about how God together uh, brought us together and then called us into the ministry of youth with a mission. Uh, I might uh, share a testimony from a passage that God used to speak to me prophetically in Haggai chapter two um, about launching a YWAM training center in the home, uh, my home city of Minneapolis. I might tell the story of how we acquired our property um, at a $2.65 million facility was given to us. And we paid $1 a year uh, for the use of that beautiful place. And so when I uh, will tell the story of my ministry, I would oftentimes include that testimony. And so once again, in this whole aspect of explaining why people should join you, why people should work with you, the important thing here, once again, is tell your story, make it personal, make the, allow them to feel a connection with who you are. And then the final step in the presentation of your vision is to be very specific about what you're asking people to do. Um, a lot of times we kind of get shy at this stage and, uh, and we kind of sometimes just hope that people will kind of assume or know what it is that we want. And we have to be specific. We have to be very clear about what is it that you're asking people to do. So for example, um, are you asking people to join your team? Are you asking people to work with you as volunteers, as staff members? Are you asking people to give money? Are you asking people to pray? Are you presenting your ministry to other organizations and you're asking them to collaborate? And so once again, um, we have to be clear, okay? Never assume that people know what you're talking about. Never assume that people just automatically know what they're supposed to do. Be very, very clear in the presentation of what it is you are hoping and praying that they will do in response to your presentation. And so I'm just gonna review what we've uh, discussed so far. These are the five basic questions. First, what is the need? And we've offered the three Ps, the option of talking about people, the option of talking about a place, or the option of talking about a passion. The next element that we have to include in the presentation of our vision is what is our vision for change? What is it that we hope will be different as a result of our ministry activity? And once again, it's here that, that I recommend you develop a single sentence, a single declaration. My vision is, and then finish the sentence. And then the third element is to discuss how it will be done. And so here we want to know um, the specific strategy, the specific uh, stages of your ministry, phase one, phase two, phase three. What are your goals for each phase? What are the activities that take place in each phase? And so this is where you're going to be very specific about uh, the practicalities of carrying out your vision. The fourth step is to discuss why you, and here is where you, you tell your story. Um, you get your testimony involved, the words of the Lord, the things God has laid on your heart, the things that God has spoken to you. And then finally, the last step, what is it that you are asking people to do? And so I encourage you to take these five steps. And if you're in a situation where you need to present your vision, uh, just start writing these out and start working on it. And, um, and once again, I think it's, it's very important that you include all of these aspects. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be in this order, but I always look at an effective presentation as a presentation that includes all these dynamics. And so this might be for an oral presentation. This might be for a video project that you're putting together to discuss your ministry. This might be a newsletter uh, that you're putting together. This might be a website that you're preparing. Um, there's a lot of different ways that we present our vision, but these are the ingredients that have to be present there. Okay, so we made a very short presentation on how to, uh, how to present vision. 
And so we can open it up now if anybody has questions or comments. Uh, we can take some time to, uh, to hear from you all. You can chime in on the uh, Zoom meeting, or uh, if you're watching on Facebook, you can type a question in on the comment section, or here in um, Zoom, you can also type a, a comment as well. Does anybody have any questions? And if you do, don't forget to uh, unmute yourself. Okay, Dr. Claire. Hi, Nadia, how are you? I'm fine. Sometimes you may have a vision to do, to set up a ministry, but there are so many obstacles surrounding that vision, like um, people might not believe in what you are trying to implement, yeah. you know, there might be a little help from others. How do you go about <laughs> doing good, go about doing God's work? Yeah. In that kind of situation. That's right. Well, if there, if there are no obstacles, then it's probably not really from God. I, I think that, that um, there's always challenges and there's always difficulties and there's always people that will tell you for this reason or for that reason, you can't do this. And, um, and that was definitely in my case, I look at every, every major ministry step that I've taken in my life. I've always had significant opposition. And so when I, um, when I first went to Mexico, when I was a young man, I had many people telling me, begging me, please don't do this. You're too young. You're not prepared. You don't have the education. You don't have the funding. You're not ready for this. Don't do this. And, um, and I had to make the choice if I was going to kind of listen to people or if I was going to listen to God. And um, the same thing happened again when I was called into youth with the mission. I had people that said to me, no, you can't do this. You're not ready. This is not going to work. This doesn't need to be done. And I think that, I think a lot of times uh, the display of our own confidence in who we are and the display of our confidence in the word that God has spoken to us is what eventually will persuade people. And I think that sometimes that takes a while, but when people see that we're not giving up and we're not, uh, we're not letting go, that we're persevering and we're believing, then sooner or later, they're going to say, well, this must be God because she just doesn't want to give up, you know? And uh, yeah. so I would just say that that's probably the most important thing. Your, your belief in yourself and your confidence in the vision that God has laid on your heart and your, your commitment to pursuing it and persevering it um, eventually is what is going to win people over. You know, when they see that you're a woman on fire and that, that you're not going to stop. Um, so, so don't be discouraged uh, and just know that, again, that that opposition is always, is always part of the process. Thank you. Does anybody else have any comments or questions? Thank you, okay, Dr. Chris. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. I've been trying, to, um, as you can see, my name comes as an encourager. It's something I've been trying to put together, but it gets blurry sometimes okay. as, to, as to what, um, as to how to go about it. So, and then it, it's in, it, it's in two sort of, um, fold one particularly um helping young people but i want to draw on experienced people to help young people so it's not okay. just centered, centered about centered around me and my skill but experiences of others yeah to be able to run the vision so in recently i'm beginning to understand that maybe i could just call it um make it a, a platform where people can come and be encouraged or people will come there to encourage others. But it's, it, it got, it's gone blurry for me at the moment. Okay. And I wonder if you could um, see where the struggle is and give a bit yeah. of a direction. Yeah. Well, I would, I would, first of all, you know, 
uh, suggest that you that you really have a very clear focus on the young people that you want to reach. And so um, maybe there's a specific area of, of London or a specific area of the city that you want to reach the young people of, of, of Penham or you want to reach the young people of, of Luton or maybe there's like a specific area. And then, you know, kind of as I was mentioning tonight, you want to become the expert on what's going on among the young people in that area. So how many of them have, have, uh, have, have, have finished school? How many of them are going to university? How many of them are unemployed? How many of them come from single parent homes? How many of them have struggles with addictions, with drugs, or, or how many of them, I don't know if there's gangs, you know, that how many of them are facing these issues? And so when you, when you become the expert on that specific group of young people, then people want to listen to what you say because they know what you're talking about. And then I would say that the next phase then is to really identify who are those mentors going to be? Because you, you're exactly right that it's not something you can just do by yourself. You need to get those experienced mentors involved. And so you have to kind of start thinking about where am I going to find these mentors? How am I going to, how am I going to present my vision to them? And, and, um, and so that's where you just have to do the work of finding where these candidates might be, maybe in a specific church or among a specific group of churches. But I would say, you know, probably the first step, once again, is, is going to be narrow down that group that you want to reach, get the information about them, get personal stories about them, and just start sharing those stories and start sharing those those uh, that information, and uh, and you and you'll soon discover who's really interested in in uh, in joining along. Does that make sense? Very much so. That's so um, yeah, um, sharp. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have a question or an idea you'd like to? To share. Dr. Clark. Yeah. My vision is to, to help younger pastors who are struggling in rural area in my country, like in Sierra Leone. We have a lot of pastors in the rural areas who are actually struggling. They want to preach the word of God but there are no facilities for them. So I want to engage in that kind of evangelical work and work to help them, to make sure that you know, they have the basic facilities so that they will be able to, 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 to spread the word of God. Yeah. And also like in the villages, sometimes they don't have place, places of worship. If I can raise some um, um, funds for them just to help build the churches in the... Yeah rural area help the the the, the pastors that yeah. is my vision for the future yeah yeah yes yeah that's like doing great... evangelical work rather than being in the four corners four walls in a church yeah that's a great that's a great vision and and i think you know one of the just an idea that i i would have is you know really focus on on telling the story of 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 two or three pastors in particular and and you know, tell the story of their, how did they come to know the Lord and their family background and what is their vision and what is it that God has placed on their hearts and what is the obstacles that they face in the ministry. Um, so I'm thinking, for example, um, there's a lot of organizations right now that, that focus on uh, what's called micro lending, micro financing. And I'm just using this as an illustration where they'll go to countries in the developing world and they'll find entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, Marta in, in Ecuador uh, has a, a, a sewing business and she's trying to raise funds to uh, buy a new sewing machine or, or Javier in Mexico has a cow and he wants to buy one more cow to increase his business. And what they do in many of these cases, um, there's one organization that kind of focuses on this, that they have a website and you go on this website and it's almost looking like at Facebook pages where you see a picture of this person and it kind of tells their story. And then it says at the bottom of the page, 
how much money they're trying to raise, you know, $500 to buy a cow or whatever. And then there's a little button that you can push that, say, that says, you know, donate now. And the genius of this website um, is that they really mastered the art of telling other people's stories. And, and that has been really effective in drawing in uh, those who are willing to get involved. And so, you know, Nadia, once again, I would, I would just think about, again, focusing maybe on four or five people that you want to help at the beginning. And I don't know if you could think of creative ways to tell their stories, if you, if you wanted to create a website, if you wanted to do a newsletter, if you can make presentations in churches, uh, you know, different ways to kind of get the word out. But if you kind of made it your task to, you know, to tell the story of these, of these pastors, um, you know, it's that, as I've kind of been saying along the way, it's that personal testimony, that personal connection that really draws people in, you know. So just one more comment. I mean, so rather than saying, you know, there's a thousand pastors in, you know, in, in, uh, in Panama who don't have access to theological training. Well, I mean, that's just a statistic in some ways. But if on the other hand, I say, you know, tonight I'm going to tell you the story of Javier and the vision that God has given him, and the obstacles that he's facing as he's trying to move forward in his ministry training. A lot of times it's that personal story that's way more effective than just, you know, big numbers or kind of generalizations. Thank so that you. would just be a practical tip there. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have a, have a question?